guitar player and you spent any time at all on the internet, more than likely you've heard of the Dumble amplifier and the Dumble sound. It's the textbook definition of iconic. The Dumble amps have been played by some of the most famous guitar players in the world. They've been used on some of the most famous recordings ever made, and they have such unique sound and response that you describe them by the name of the man that created these amp circuits, the Dumble sound. These amps are incredibly sought after, so much so that when they do go up for sale, it's not uncommon for them to go for over six figures, depending on the model and who's owned it before that current buyer. They really are the most iconic boutique amplifier of all time. But what is the Dumble sound and how do we achieve it at home? How do we get that iconic tone without spending six figures on an amplifier? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. lesson. Alexander Dumble started modifying and repairing amps in the early to mid 60s. And by the mid to late 70s, he was actually building his own custom amps from scratch, much like Paul Rivera and Randall Smith were at the time. This was the early, early days of the boutique amp era. Now, where Dumble started to differ from guys like Randall Smith and Paul Rivera was he never expanded his operation. Throughout the history of Dumble amplifiers, it's always just been him building the amps one at a time from scratch for bespoke customers. And because of this, no two Dumbles are actually really the same. For instance, you could take two of the most popular model of his, the Overdrive Special, and those two amps are going to have inherent differences in them because they were built for two different players. So that's an important thing to consider later when we're talking about getting the Dumble sound. You kind of have to consider, well, which Dumble are you trying to get the sound of? Now, it didn't take long for word to spread about these amps and the man that built them. And you had players from the LA session scene start to jump on board really soon. Guys like Larry Carlton, for example. And Robin Ford, who's known for playing a Dumble, was actually said to be the inspiration for the Overdrive special. Apparently, Howard Alexander Dumble went to a Robin Ford show in Santa Cruz at a local club there where he was playing a mid-60s Fender basement, I believe, with a tube screamer in front of it. And Dumble was inspired by the tone that Robin Ford was getting out of that rig and went and designed what is arguably the most famous and iconic boutique amp ever, the Overdrive Special. Now, I should say that a few months ago, before the pandemic hit, I saw Robin play that Dumble, his actual Dumble here in Atlanta. And when I tell you it was the best guitar tone I've ever heard in person, Obviously, that's because it's Robin Ford playing. If I went and played that rig, I would sound nothing like that, but still. Now, that's part of the lore of the Dumble Amp, is the people that have played them over the years. It started off with guys like Larry Carlton and Robin Ford, and it quickly expanded. Now, obviously, you can't talk about Dumble Amps without talking about Stevie Ray Vaughan, arguably one of the most famous Dumble Amp players of all time. Stevie got turned on to Dumble's Amps at Jackson Brown's studio when they were recording Texas Flood in 1982. Jackson Jackson had a Dumbleland 300 watt bass amp there that Stevie used and he was impressed by the insane clean high headroom. Not long after recording that album, he ordered his first of two steel string singers that he was known for using live and on records after that. And as an example of Alex Dumble building bespoke amps for bespoke players, he took what was normally a 100 watt amp in the steel string singer and made it a 150 watt amp for Stevie because he liked the higher headroom and loud 
louder output volume that he used on stage. I mean, you could make a whole series of videos on each one of those players and how they use their Dumbo amps in different ways. And again, it's worth mentioning that each one of those players had a completely different tone using a Dumbo amplifier. That's part of the mystique. It's part of the lore. Now, if you know anything about Dumble amplifiers, then you know how insanely expensive they are. They're essentially unobtainable for normal everyday players like you and me. In fact, I saw an Overdrive special for sale in Nashville a few years ago, one of my favorite shops in town that had been previously owned by John Mayer and Keith Urban. And they were asking no less than $150,000 for that amp. I don't know if it ever actually sold for that price, but still, that's insane. Because of these insane prices, it's led a lot of people online to say that these amps are totally overrated. They're really not all that special. And I can sort of see that argument. But I think the best way I've heard the hype around Dumbles described is imagine if Jim Marshall only ever built 300 Marshalls. That was it. For the whole world, there was just 300 Marshall amps. Now, obviously, that's an iconic sound that's been used and popularized by tons of players throughout the years. And if there was only 300 Marshalls around, then, yeah, you can bet they'd be going for insane money. So what is the Dumble sound and how do we get it at home? Well, I think the first thing to consider is what a Dumble doesn't sound like. It doesn't sound like a Marshall. It doesn't sound like a Vox. It doesn't sound like an Orange or a High Watt. I think the closest thing you could compare it to would be it's the far distant cousin of a Fender. And when you look at how Dumble started designing amps back in the late 60s, early 70s, it makes sense because he started out modifying Fender amps of that era. But with that said, you can't really say that this is a modified Fender because this does things that Fenders don't do. And by the way, this is not actually a Dumble. This is a clone from Amplified Nation. This video is not sponsored in any way. They're not paying for this video. They sent me this amp to check out on loan. And actually, this is the amp that inspired this video. This is the Wonderland Overdrive. And it's essentially an Overdrive special clone with a few tweaks. Now, after listening to Dumble tones for years by the likes of John Mayer and Robin Ford and Stevie Ray Vaughan, the best way I could describe the Dumble sound is huge. The clean tone of a Dumble is three-dimensional. The top end is sparkly and brilliant, but it's in no way harsh or biting. And the overdrive is the best part. It's, it's a smooth, violin-like overdrive sound that, when played well really, really comes to life. So let's talk about how to get the Dumble sound at home. The first method is pretty simple. Get yourself a Dumble style amplifier. A clone like this one is relatively affordable compared to the actual Dumbles themselves. Not gonna have the resale value of a real Dumble, but still, the circuitry and the response and the tone are gonna be very, very close. When I talked to Taylor, the owner of Amplified Nation, the guy that built this amp, he told me that the overdrive section is pretty close to what you would hear from like a Robin Ford's overdrive special, and the clean section is late 2000s John Mayer continuum era clean sounds. And I have to admit, I've been playing this amp for the last two days pretty much nonstop, and I think he's right. It really does do that early 80s Robin Ford overdrive sound and the late 2000s John Mayer continuum sound really, really well. This thing loves strats. <laughs> Now let's say an amp from 2Rock or Amplified Nation is not really in your budget. I completely understand. So what's the next best thing? 
pedals, specifically amp and a box pedals. These are becoming increasingly popular. Now, to my knowledge, the Dumble in a Box thing started with the Zen Drive. I believe it was from Hermedia Audio, and now it's Love Pedal. It's kind of a confusing thing there. Now, the Zen Drive is a really popular option for that really smooth, mid-focused, Dumble-style overdrive. Nowadays, original Zen Drives can be somewhat hard to come by, and they can be a little bit pricey on the used market. And if you're looking for more of that Dumble in a Box, thing, there are some other options out there to consider. In the past, I've owned some pedals from Jetter, who's a local builder here in Atlanta, who makes incredible pedals. He does several Dumble in a Box style overdrives, but what I currently own are from Vertex, the Ultraphonics Overdrive and the Ultraphonics HRM. Now, these two pedals in particular are meant to be faithful recreations of the Dumble Overdrive Specials and the HRM modded Dumble uh, in a box for your pedal board. And they actually sound really good. <laughs> drive to your pedal board, but you still want to get that Dumble tone. Well, if you have an EQ, you can stack it before or after an overdrive, and we can use this to shape the tone of the overdrive going into a somewhat clean amp to get that overdrive special tone. Now, there's a lot of nuance and subtlety to a Dumble's overdrive, but we can replicate that by pushing the mid-range. If you listen to Robin Ford's tone, for example, you can tell that it's pretty mid-focused. There is some high-end content and clarity there. It's not at all ice-picky or harsh. With an EQ going into an overdrive pedal, we can use this to shape the tone and tailor it to compensate for whatever type of overdrive circuit you might be using, going into whatever type of amp you might be using. And with a little tweaking, we can essentially replicate that Dumble style overdrive sound. So right now I'm playing into the front of my Port City Pearl, which is a totally clean sort of Fender-esque pedal platform amp. And it's just completely clean. There's no overdrive, very little color coming through. <laughs> pretty straight ahead. And if you look here, I've got an overdrive going into an EQ. Now you can experiment with this. You can put the EQ before the overdrive. You can put it after the overdrive and see which gives you the best results. It's going to depend on your amp, your guitar, your overdrive, your EQ. Now, this overdrive is the Coco Pelli from Lawrence Petros Design, and I picked this one because it's a pretty straight ahead, simple overdrive. You just have a level control, a drive control, and a fat switch. And this is what it sounds like on its own. Sounds pretty good, and it's sort of in the neighborhood of what we're looking to get. So we actually don't need to do a ton of EQ shaping to get close to our Dumble sound. Now I'm gonna engage the EQ, and as you can see on the front panel here, it's completely flat. Now you're gonna hear me play the same licks over and over again here, and the reason is because I'm referencing something. I just listened to a Robin Ford solo, and so I have that tone in my head, and that's what I'm going for. And this is a really great thing to do whenever you are sculpting your own sounds at home. If you have a reference in mind, listen to it and try and match what you're hearing through the speakers. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of 4K as well and see what that gives me. <laughs> That's pretty good. I might want to add a little bit more 4K just to see what that does. That's a little bit better. Now let's add a little bit of bottom end. I'm going to try some 250 and see what that gives me. And you always want to be checking to see what you're adding. So here it is with it on. We are adding a little volume overall, so I'm going to bring that down with this gain control here. One other thing to try when you're testing out an EQ, if you want to see what a particular band is doing, try 
boosting it really high and you'll hear that frequency jump out above everything else. <laughs> So that's 8K, and that's actually giving me something that I want. So I'm going to bring it back down and just boost it a little bit. Now let me hear what 16K is doing. I'm going to bring it all the way up. And that's actually giving me a little bit of that top-end sparkle that I'm looking for. And now I think that's getting pretty close to that Dumble sound from an EQ pedal. You could continue to tweak from here and really dial things in for your specific overdrive and amp combination, but this should show you sort of the fundamentals of how to dial in a sound using an EQ. So that is the Dumble sound and how to get it in your own rig at home. If you enjoyed today's video, let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. If you'd like to support the channel, check out the links in the description box. You can sign up for the green room down there. You can buy something through an affiliate link, which helps me in making these videos. And you can check out my tone course, which is a video course I made dedicated to the ins and outs of great guitar tone. I had a ton of fun making this video and I'm actually considering making this a series here on the channel. So let me know in the comments what you want to see next, the blank sound. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Rhett Schull. And if you're watching this video the week it comes out, don't forget Backstage Live episode three is happening this Saturday, September 9th. Wait, I really should know this because September 12th, not the 9th. Today is the 9th. September 12th, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Backstage Live Episode 3 is happening on this YouTube channel. If you haven't caught a Backstage Live before, it's a full band live show streamed from my home studio here. So be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Rhett Schull, and remember, there is no Plan B.